Hi, welcome to this tutorial on transformations of trigonometric graphs. And what I'm assuming is that you're familiar with the three trigonometric graphs y equals sine x, y equals cos x, and y equals tan x. And what we're going to look at is transforming any of these graphs, y equals f of x, by applying y equals f of minus x. And what this represents is a reflection in the y-axis. What we'll do is we'll start off with the first one, y equals sine x. And if we take that graph, y equals sine x, I'm letting f of x be the sine x in this case. And that graph, as I say, you should be familiar with. I've drawn it here going from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. And it goes from minus 1 to 1. So if we're drawing this graph, y equals f of minus x, what we do is we replace any x with a minus x in the original graph of y equals f of x. So this x here, as you can see, is replaced with a minus x. And this represents, according to this rule, a reflection in the y-axis. So if you're familiar with reflections of a graph in the y-axis, maybe you might like to pause this video and sketch what you think it's going to look like. Okay, well, let's see how you got on. Okay, let's just draw that graph in. It's going to look something like this. At first glance, it almost looks as if we have reflected the red graph of sine x in the x-axis. Well, yes, for this particular example, it does look exactly the same. It gives the same result, but that's not always going to be the case. But it, we have reflected it in the y-axis. Take this point, for instance, on y equals sine x at minus 271. You can see that it's gone over to here at 271. Take a point like this at 180.0. It's actually gone to minus 180 zero and you can look at that for all the other points and hopefully you can see that the red graph has been reflected in the y-axis okay well let's have a look now at y equals cos x okay now here we have the graph then of y equals cos x and I've let f of x be equal to cos x and what we're going to do now is replace that x with a minus x. So we end up with y equals f of minus x, which is going to be the cosine of minus x. So you might like to pause the video and sketch in the reflection of this graph then in the y-axis. OK, if you had a go, let's see how you got on. Well, if we were to sketch that in, that's what we get it actually overwrites the original graph of y equals cos x. It's the same thing. So I hope you got that. And let's look at the last graph, y equals tan x. So here's the graph then of y equals tan x, f of x being tan x. And we've got the asymptotes marked in here. OK, where the curve approaches these lines, lines at minus 270, minus 90, 90 and 270 degrees. So we're going to look at replacing the x with minus x. So we've got f of minus x, y equals tan of minus x. Again, you might like to pause the video, have a go at sketching this graph. All right, let's see how you got on. You should have a graph that looks like this. All right, a reflection then of our tan x graph in the y-axis. OK, well, that brings us now to the end of this video tutorial, where I hope that you've been able to see then how y equals f of minus x always represents a reflection in the y-axis and how we've been able to use it then on these three standard graphs.